Today, we are going to study the Word of God. Who do you say I am? Today, many brothers and sisters have come from America and Europe as well. Thank you for coming. Today's title is, Who do you say I am? Let me ask you a question. There was a woman. She was the mother of a boy named Forschiller. She had three sons. The first son's name was One Schiller. The second son's name was Two Schiller. Then what is the third son's name? This is the question. Three Schiller? It is four Schiller. This is from an American quiz. People think one, two, and next is three. So it is three Schiller. However, the answer was four Schiller. Actually, this is very simple. But people think that after one Schiller and two Schiller, it is three Schiller. We should get rid of our fixed ideas. When we approach an answer after getting rid of our fixed ideas, we can understand the truth in the Bible as well. Today our subject is Jesus' question. Who do you say I am? Who do people say I am? In a way, Jesus thought, until now you have learned from me, and it is about time for you to be able to answer correctly. So he asked that question. Now is the prophetical time for us too to answer the question, Who do you say I am? The time has come to find the answer in the 66 books of the Bible. We should know the answer. We don't have much time. Regarding the question, who do you say I am? We need to study the Bible. Everybody, God proclaimed the Old Covenant on Mount Sinai through Moses and let people study the law of the Old Covenant for about 1,500 years until Jesus Christ came. After the Jews finished studying for 1,500 years, God came to the earth and asked, Who am I? When God gave them the question, did the Jews have the correct answer? No. They didn't have the correct answer. In this age too, God is giving us the same question then why couldn't the Jews answer correctly? Because they didn't know the reason God gave them the law. If they knew the will of God in giving them the law, they would have answered the question correctly. However, they didn't know the reason and purpose of God's giving them the law. Let's see Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ. What is the role of the law? Whom does it lead us to? The role of the law is to lead us to God the Savior. When God proclaimed the Old Covenant on Mount Sinai, God let the Israelites study the law for about 1,500 long years so that when He came to the earth in the flesh, in the name of Jesus, they would be able to recognize Him. God taught His people that they must recognize Him through the law, even though He came to the earth in the flesh. The law does not exist only to be kept, but through the law, God is leading us to God. 
and to learn the teachings of God. Then, what kinds of laws do we have? There is the law of the Old Covenant and the law of the New Covenant. The Old Covenant, the law of Moses, led people to the first coming Christ. Then, as for the New Covenant established by the first coming Christ, whom does it lead us to? According to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 through 28, how many times will Christ come to this earth? It says that He will come a second time. Then shouldn't there be a way for us to recognize Christ when He comes in the flesh a second time? God let the Israelites study the Old Covenant for 1,500 years so that they may recognize the first coming Christ. And since the first coming Christ established the New Covenant, it was made for us to recognize the second coming Christ. That is the reason the law of the New Covenant exists. The Old Covenant has its reason and purpose for its existence, and the New Covenant has its own reason and purpose for its existence. If people don't understand the New Covenant correctly, can they recognize the Spirit and the Bride? No. For a long time of 1,500 years, the Jews thoroughly studied the law. Among them, especially those who had the title of scribe, wrote down the words of the Bible from the very first page to the very last page. In those days, copy machines didn't exist, so they had to record the words of the Bible one by one by a human hand. They transcribed the Bible. They were experts about the law. However, they did not understand the purpose of the law. Though they knew the law itself, they did not know what God wanted them to obtain through the law. They did not know the ultimate purpose of the law. So, they ended up only knowing the letters of the law. They knew the Sabbath day in the law of Moses. They knew the Passover and the seven feasts in the law of Moses. But whom did they not receive? They did not receive the Christ whom the law testified about. They rejected Christ and crucified Him, who was the perfect fulfillment of the law. Could they be saved? The Jews who rejected and crucified Christ could not be saved. It is the same in this age. We should precisely know the characteristics of the law, but we must understand what God wants to give us through the law. The Old Covenant led us to the Christ who came in the flesh the first time. Now, the New Covenant is leading us to the Spirit and the Bride who have come in the flesh in the last age. We should understand this mission and role of the New Covenant. Suppose that some people keep the Sabbath and the Passover, though it is not exactly the same as ours, but they do not believe in the Spirit and the Bride. Then they are like the Jews, who were experts in the law, but rejected Christ and received the punishment of eternal hell. If they claim to know the new covenant, but deny the Spirit and the Bride, it is to prove that they do not know what the new covenant is in actuality. Such people cannot receive salvation. Let's see Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. 
We can fully understand the role of the Old Covenant and the role of the New Covenant, can't we? In the time of the Law of Moses, the full acceptance of the Law brought about the recognition of Jesus Christ. In this age, the full acceptance of the Law of the New Covenant definitely leads to the recognition of the Spirit and the Bride. All the answers are given at the end. We can accept the Spirit and the Bride who appear at the end. Two thousand years ago, Jesus Christ appeared to the Jews who had studied the law for about 1,500 years. Jesus asked, Who do people say I am? He wanted to know how people understood Him. They answered, Some people say Elijah. Some people say a prophet like Jeremiah. Are those answers correct? As they all gave the wrong answers, Jesus asked again, Then who do you say I am? Jesus thought, Shouldn't you know about me? Thinking that, he asked his disciples, Who do you say I am? Peter bravely took the initiative to answer. In the Bible, the bravest among the disciples was Peter. Peter was also rebuked the most. I think because Peter took more initiative than others, he made more mistakes than others did. Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He answered correctly. The words Son of God mean God Himself. Doesn't the Bible already tell us that the Son of God is God? When you see Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This child, who was born as a son, is the Everlasting Father. The Son is the Father. When Peter said, You are the Son of God, he meant, You are God. Peter gave the perfect answer. This is why earlier I asked you the question. Four Schiller's mom had three sons. The first son's name was one Schiller, and the second son's name was two Schiller. Then what was the third son's name? I didn't give you this question just to laugh. When you understand this question, you can understand the Bible. For sure, the members of Zion are smart. I thought that you were all going to say three Schiller, but instead, you all said four Schiller. Our members of Zion are truly different from others. Just as you all answered correctly, Peter gave the correct answer right away. Even the people who studied the law, inscribed the law, and made handwritten copies of the law, for 1,500 years rejected Christ. They did not receive Christ. Peter grew up in that society, so he was aware of the law and experienced it. Who do you say I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter gave the correct answer. Then what did Jesus say? Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by whom? By God. Jesus meant that God gave him the wisdom to understand and answer the question correctly. Those who studied the law for 1,500 years did not know the role and purpose of the law. They just focused on the tradition and regulations of the law itself, without understanding what they should learn from the law. However, Peter recognized Jesus Christ and could go to heaven. The Jews didn't acknowledge the Christ, though they knew the law. Ultimately, 
They couldn't help but receive the punishment of hell. That was why they took the lead in putting Jesus on the cross. They spat on him, mocked him, and hindered him through their blasphemous words and actions. In this age, we study about the Sabbath, Passover, and the words of truth. Many members are focusing on the study of the New Covenant. That is good. Studying the Bible is good. But we need to pay careful attention to the conclusion of the study. We shouldn't finish the study only with obtaining knowledge of the law. But through that law, we must receive God, who appears a second time to save us. Let's see Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. All of them gave the wrong answers. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? They should have known the answer because they learned the law for 1,500 years. Let's see verse 16. Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by men, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. If a church correctly recognizes Christ, it can never be destroyed, even if Satan hinders it. After Peter recognized Christ, God said, On this rock I will build my church. This kind of place is where God wants to build His church. It doesn't matter whether it is Area A, Area B, or Area C. If people recognize Christ and believe in Him, God allows them to be a church. Let's see verse 18. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will overcome it, will not overcome it. In order for us to become the church that the gates of Hades can never overcome, we must recognize Christ through the law and absolutely believe in Him. That church can carry out the mission to shine the light of truth in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. God gave a great reward to Peter, who had the correct answer. Let's see verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 2, what is the mystery of God? If a secret is widely known, it is not a secret anymore. Jesus meant, Peter already knew, but I want to test those who have been studying the law for 1,500 years. Jesus tested the Jews. Jesus looked as if he was weak, pitiful, and had no power. The Jews all failed to recognize the Messiah, the Christ. They did not want to acknowledge that he was the creator of the heavens and the earth. Jesus tested them all. He went to all different regions and cities in order to test them and see the result of their studying the Bible for the past 1,500 years. 
God said that the law was put in charge to lead people to Christ. Now, 2,000 years have passed since God proclaimed the new covenant in order to find His people in the last days. Although the truth of the new covenant was absent during the dark ages, 2,000 years have passed since its proclamation. For this long period of time, God taught people the new covenant, and He is now looking for those who know the answer to the question, to whom is the new covenant leading us? Some people say, I love the truths of the Church of God, such as the Passover and the Sabbath day. Everything is very good, but can't you take away the father and mother? These people are those who only think of the law itself. Everybody, are we looking for God in order to believe the law? Who is the object of our faith? It is God, not the law itself. Because we believe in God, because God commanded us to keep the Sabbath day, we keep the Sabbath. Because we believe in God, because God told us to remember the Passover by keeping it holy, we keep the Passover. The law is not first. God is first. The reason we need the law is that the law gives important clues for us to recognize Christ. That's why we study the law of the new covenant. Let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make, what? Make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. God says He will proclaim the new covenant. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Those who have the law of the new covenant should confirm who the Christ is that comes to the earth a second time because the new covenant has the role to lead them to Christ. We should know. For 1,500 years, God taught the Israelites about the appearance of the first coming Christ. He taught His people through various parables, symbols, and stories. But they did not recognize Jesus as the Messiah, the Savior, but rather rejected Him. Their long years of studying the law turned out to be in vain. The role of the law is to lead people to Christ. All of their studying was in vain when they rejected Jesus. It is the same when we study the law of the New Covenant. Let's look at Micah chapter 4, verse 1. In the last days, the last days indicate the end time. The mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways, so that we may walk in His paths. The law will go out from where? From Zion. We know very well that the law of Moses came from Mount Sinai. The role of the law of Moses was to lead people to Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh. Then whom does the law of the new covenant lead us to? The new covenant leads us to the Spirit and the Bride. This is the role of the new covenant. Those who fail to take the new covenant to heart think, all I need to do is just keep the Sabbath 
or the Passover, or the commandments. However, that is not all they should do. Shouldn't they find God and receive Him through those commandments? Let's see Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Even if we become experts of the new covenant, it means nothing if we do not recognize God the Holy Spirit, our Father, and the Bride, the New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother. Even if we study the new covenant for 100 years, or 1,000 years, or even 2,000 years, it is meaningless. We all must receive Heavenly Father and Mother and believe in them. When we follow them wherever they lead us, the life-giving power of the law will become evident, and we can say that the law has fulfilled its mission. That is why God taught us to study the history of Abraham's family. In Abraham's family, Abraham represents God. And which covenant does Sarah, Abraham's wife, represent? She represents the New Covenant. The Jerusalem that is above is free. And who is she? She is our mother. We shouldn't study the New Covenant just for the sake of studying. If we do, we are not any different than the Jews who became experts in the law but crucified Jesus. What good is it to have all the knowledge regarding the law, but not know the answer that they must know? We must find the correct answer through the law. Through the law of the new covenant, we must recognize God Elohim, who is the Spirit and the Bride in Zion in this last age. Yesterday, when the overseas members were studying, they talked about a lion. When a lion roars, how do all other animals react? They fear and tremble. Even just listening to the roaring sound of the lion, all animals faint with fear. However, there is one that responds oppositely. When the lion roars, he is filled with joy and excitement. What is it? Please answer. Right. Our members are very different. It is a baby lion. A lion cub never trembles in fear, no matter how ferociously the lion roars. Instead, he gets very excited and roars too, following his mom and dad. It is the same with us. Our father and mother govern the whole universe. We are children of Heavenly Father and Mother. What does it say here? The Spirit and the Bride are giving the free gift of the water of life by saying, Come, Almighty God the Father and Mother spoke these words. Why don't we roar too? Say to people, Come, come to our Zion. You who are thirsty, please come and believe in the New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother, the reality of the New Covenant. We ought to be the children who can roar like that. Doesn't the Bible say that there is the will of God in giving us the law and in creating all things? There was God's will in creating Adam. There was God's will in creating Eve and in creating mothers as the ones who give life. Also, there is a purpose and the will of God in giving us the law. The role of the Old Covenant is to lead us to the first coming of Christ, and the role of the New Covenant is to lead us to the Spirit and the Bride. We are now living under the law of the New Covenant. The law of the New Covenant is very important because God said it was important. However, the ones whom we should know through the law are the most important. They 
are the Spirit and the Bride. I hope that we will enter the eternal kingdom of heaven by correctly understanding the role of the law, like Apostle Peter. I will conclude this sermon today. Thank you very much.